All right. Hello, literates. We are back after a month off with a rivalry conversation collaboration. Hello. So this month we are back on my channel. We are talking about poetry because it's National Poetry Month. Yay! So in case this is your first one, um, I'm Britt. If you're on my channel, you probably know who I am. But in case you don't, I'm Britt Riderly. This is my channel, Britt Riderly. I talk about the intersections of literature and culture on this book and author tube. I share some original work. I share my writing journey. Um, and I sometimes talk about like books, sometimes in review form, sometimes in just like topical conversational form. I just uploaded a book talk of Namina Forna's YA fantasy debut, The Gilded One. So hop on over and check it out. That book is amazing. You will not regret watch, watching it. You will not, well soon because it's becoming a movie and she's writing screenplay for it. So get excited. But you, for now, you will not um, regret listening to it or reading it. So do that. I'm gonna let my lovely co-host introduce herself. Uh, hey everybody, I'm Cache. I write short stories, poetry, and the occasional blog post. My channel is Shay with the Hobbies, and yeah, I'm, I'm ready to get into it. We got April Poetry Month going on, so. Yes, so today we're going to talk about um, the importance of poetry. We're going to talk about our favorite poets, um, our own poetry, and then the significance of poetry to Black expressive culture. So we have a full agenda of poetry, buckle up, follow along. Okay, so starting with the importance of poetry, what do you think is the importance of poetry? And I'm talking about like specifically the influence of poetry outside of the poetic genre. There's like a thought that comes to mind and uh, I can't remember if Walter Mosley said it or if he was like, um quoting someone else who said it um but to paraphrase it was pretty much about just how if you're not in your country or spaces literature and what they read then you don't exist you don't exist in that culture if you're not in the literature the books the poetry those things because that is what makes a culture right and like if you think about it for us like we barely have any movies that weren't books or comics or something first like almost all the time that is where everything that we get like comes from is something that was written first um and so when I think about poetry that kind of is like the first thought that comes to mind is that um especially considering how important English is like mm -hmm. in America, for mm -hmm. most schools, it's the only thing that you're required to do four of guarantee. You know, usually it's like three math, three science, three social studies, but it's always for English. It's always trying to make sure that you like there's yeah, there's like I don't I know at least here and in the South, it's not like that. Like they you don't get three option, three years of English. Um, and so it just stands out to me that the written word and what it is and how it gets out is super important to the culture of a people. Poetry is that like that universal form of writing. It's that one form of writing that doesn't necessarily have as many rules or as many things that you have to stick to. It's legitimately in how you choose to present what it is that you're trying to say and um I can't remember um where the study was but I'll find it and send it to you but there was a study and it's like poetry is usually more often the only form of writing adults do once they graduate high school like outside of school work like most people have at least written like one poem outside of being forced to compare it to like writing a story or writing you know what I mean your thoughts or things like that and it's because I think the poetry itself just has this universal language that makes it a more accessible form of writing in my opinion 
And so I think that that is like a big thing about poetry. And it's one of the things that drew me into it because it was so much easier to write out my thoughts in a abstract way instead of that uniform subject predicate noun like you know what I mean like it's not it's not all that and it's okay to not be all that because that's the nature of poetry it's fluid so I, I hope that answers your question I feel like I talked a lot I don't know I think I answered it about what I think it is but I don't, I don't know I don't know I think I did <laughs> no you definitely did and I'm gonna hop off of that um, to your point of Walter Mosley saying, if you're not in uh, the art, essentially, if you're not in the art, you didn't exist. Um, France Fanon, who is a black psychiatrist, and I wanna say he's Antiguan, but I don't think that's true. I'll clarify in the in a little caption somewhere here. Um, but he, um, he is a psychiatrist who worked with soldiers who had PTSD. Um, and he has a, um, a book published in 1961 called Wretched of the Earth. And there is a chapter um, on nation and culture or something like that, where essentially he's talking about how nations survive colonialism in smaller ways. So not in like in rebellions or whatever, but like how they survive through art because the art is the thing that doesn't die when colonial um, forces come in and try to change culture or try to say y'all can't do that this is savage you're gonna do it this way because this is more proper art is what keeps a culture alive um, because living things grow so when you stop people from doing other things that define their culture like dress um, or speech things that imperial schools or colonial schools um, or missionary schools are supposed to correct art and culture is what keeps cold is art and culture. Art um, and poetry specifically, um, but art is what keeps cultures alive. Um, and so I think that it's very telling that we have two different um, writers from two different periods and cultures um, saying, and by culture, I mean like they're both black, but like Walter Mosley is an African-American man and Franz Fanon, wherever he's from it was not America and he did a lot of his work in France um and so we have two different writers from two different periods and two different cultures and two totally different contexts because France Fanon was writing about like empire and war and all these different things both saying you need the art to, to, to sustain yourself in very very consequential ways like not oh like I had a bad day and writing this poem really helped me like express my emotions like that happens on like micro levels, but on macro levels, art has the ability to revive and and um, sustain culture. So I think that's huge. Um, so yeah, no, you totally answered the question. Um, and I think that as far as like other genres, like the influence of poetry on other genres, I some of the best books I've read like. In, in critical theory have had a bit of a poetic style in the language because there are some things like when you were struggling to say, mm, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like there's a way in which poetry escapes that not being able to say, right? Because poetry can say the ineffable right? or can express the ineffable because you don't have to say it in ways that are like concrete, you get to be abstract, you get to play, you get to use images instead of instead of concrete um, words and examples or whatever to express yeah. something. And there's a lot of freedom in that. Favorite poets um, and their influence on you in your own writing. Um, okay, so uh, um, uh, black poets, of course, so. Uh, my two favorite um, oldies but goodies would be uh, Langston Hughes and Maya Angelou, um, mainly because those were like the two like first that um, like as a child um, grew up like memorizing versions like their poems and things like that for like speech competitions and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So um, because of that, they really helped to like shape my voice. And so like in my old like 
I have journals from like high school and majority of them don't have stories in them. They have poems because it was so much easier to express like what I was feeling and what I was in a poem rather than try to tell a story. Like there's too many mechanics for a story and poetry, you kind of get to throw that out the window. And uh, with Langston and with Maya Angelou, uh, one for Langston, it was like the history of him and what he was doing and just everything about like the time in which he was writing, um, especially because like, for us, like we way back generation, we don't know nothing about like other than hearing the retelling and hearing the vocalization and hearing those things. It's like, for me, his poetry is like a super dope way to get to experience that time. Um, and so I, I, I loved him for that. And then for Maya Angelou, Maya Angelou was like, the poet of our generation of like my time, right? Like, so like in elementary school and middle school, like there were always like things going on at the Greenwood Cultural Center where she was coming to speak and she was coming and doing book signings and things like that. So like when it came to poetry, it was like, she was the end all be all like in my like childhood life as far as female poets were. But it honestly wasn't until I became an adult and I went back and read I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings and I went back and read like her other books. I want to say I have like four in my uh, office that it was like these words hit so much more and they make so much more sense because you just in general, there's stuff that you hear at a certain age that you don't get to understand and appreciate until you get a little bit older and then I get older and I actually care more about her life. So I'm reading more about her life and reading more about what she did, like outside of just how she wrote it and knowing like all these things affected that and created this artistry. And yeah, like th those two, like they do it for me because they're at, like, again, with uh, Walter Mosley and Friends, you said it was- Friends Fanon. Mm -hmm. Friends Fanon. Like they're at two different time periods completely different and completely different in how they choose to do their poetry but the way that it makes individuals feel me specifically is the same right like it's both of them get me like fired up and it's like this is black excellence for me like it's just I don't know it's just exciting to me like to get to hear that because I feel like poetry is so much more personal sometimes like poetry, I feel like, and you know, some people might agree. I feel like poetry takes something out of you that just regular storytelling doesn't. And I feel like for those two poets, I could always feel that when I was reading their words. I could always feel that when I was like hearing past recordings of them reciting their words. Like those were things that stuck out to me. So, okay, your turn. I feel like I talked. About yeah. <laughs> no, like. I'm just like resonating with what you're saying because it's so true. And like both of us write poetry, like have written and are still writing poetry and it's vulnerable and it, it's never not vulnerable. And so, and I think that part of what might is, is a part of that is because when we're, we also both write novels, like write novel length stories, I have characters that are parts of me but they are representations of, of pieces of me. And no one knows that unless they know me. Like I've had people read, um, beta read books and they're like, oh, I like this character, I like that character. And then I've had friends beta read and they're like, why is this character you? Right, right. Like, like, you, you don't know unless you know. self implant yourself in the story, that's what you're doing, right? That's I mean, what? I feel like all writers in some oh, way do. But the thing is, like, no, you, no one knows unless they know you. Right. But with poetry, when you speak, it's always assumed to come from an intimate, quiet, um, set apart, sanctified place. But and I think part of it is because poetry allows us to express the ineffable. So those things that we choose not to say that we hide away that we can't say can come out in poetry and so it's automatically more vulnerable because these are not things that we necessarily express on the daily all the time um so yeah I was just like resonating with your things I'm like yes 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 and like those two powerhouses like 
Langston Hughes poems really be like this man was a whole beast like his like his poem I can't remember the poem but he was like maybe this is my America too or something like that when he was talking about like you 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 have us serve you then you send me to the kitchen but in the kitchen I eat I and I go strong yeah, I'm America. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It's I was like, girl, 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 man, man. That mm. is never going. I mean, unfortunately or not, whatever. Like that's not for a while. Like that will be relevant for a long time. And he wrote that decades ago. But we can still. My favorite LinkedIn poem is "Warning," and it will always be relevant. Like my favorite line is. In the beginning, he goes like, Negro, sweet and docile, meek, humble and kind. Beware the day they change their mind. That line, beware right. the day. Right. Like he knew, like it, low key is prophetic, if you ask me. Yeah. Beware yes. the day when these things change because right. they're going to change. Right. They're going. In, Girl, and that's, that's the thing is the the power of poetry to be prophetic and the power of the poet to prophesy in a very similar way to like in the kingdom and kingdoms the joker or the clown the jester was the person closest to the king and had the power to had the had the privilege to speak truth to power poets always have that right even in lands where there are no kings and even in lands where they are oppressed suppressed depressed whatever the emotional register of the poet they always have the power to prophesy it does then they don't need to be allowed they don't need permission jesters need audiences poetry it can be performed it can be written and it's still gonna slap it poetry right. can be an artifact and still punch and you in the throat if you don't believe us poets at instagram search the hashtag it will change your life it will change like, your life it's like, always it's always viable um and so, yes, resonating with everything you're saying, my, I am um, multiple poets, right? But I had to choose. So I like I, I left one out. And so I'm going to see if you say this person, because I'm 90% sure you are going to say this person. And so when you say this person, I'm going to just shout. So go ahead. I hope I don't disappoint you. because I, I feel like you will. I feel like you're going to say this person. And the only reason I feel like you are is because this is the one poet that we have both talked about like together multiple times. So I feel like you are going to say this person. But if you don't, I'm going to say them and then you're going to shout because I said they name. Like either okay. way, you can shout. Either. Okay, cool. Oh. One is a, like an old head and the other one's a more contemporary one. Um, And they both do like sort of similar things, but a little different. So the first one is Lucille Clifton. And that. is that who he, is that? No, that's person? not who it was. Okay. But I knew you were gonna say her name. Like I've been thinking of her name all day long. And I was like, I know I'm gonna learn about her today. I know I'm gonna learn about her today. I know it. Luc what she has this poem that I, like, I think a lot of people will know her from. It's called Come Celebrate. And the end of that poem, I'm telling you, these poets be walking around with machetes, like. The end of the poem is, come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. And ooh, it be the bars for me. Like, all right, and has failed. Low key, right. that sounds like no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Uh -huh. but okay, okay. It's for okay. me, it's the script for me. Like. It, Love it. And then she has a poem about history that reminds me of warning after you said it. I was like, that remind this is a collection of her poetry called Quilting. Um, and it's so go get quilting. It's so good because she and part of how she yes, quilting. Um, part of what she does that influences my poetry is reminding me to be reflective of history. Um and it reminds me that that poetry can tell a story. Now, I already knew that my do I and I have poems that tell stories, but I don't have any collections. And I think that she just is instructive for me about the ways that poetry can tell stories. So the book, the the collection starts off um, with like. I'm using a background so y'all don't see my kitchen today. 
for of course it's not all time but like <laughs> it has like sections so there's it starts with um the section quilting starts with this poem of quilting i'm not gonna read it all but just like to this is how she writes and it's so like you have to you have to slow down when you read her and i love writers that make you slow down and respect the craft and not just be like oh that was fire like it is but it also makes you be like hold on i need to go slowly here so somewhere in the unknown world a yellow-eyed woman sits with her daughter quilting some other where alchemists mumble over pots their chemistry stirs into science their science freezes into stone in the unknown world the woman threading together her need and her needle nods toward the smiling girl. Remember, this will keep us warm. And that was painting the picture. Right, like, and that's why I love Lucille Clifton, pictures. Like, and you clearly you see that I've like been studying this poem, but like, it's, the fact that like she's creating worlds and in quilting she talks about creation she has this wonderful poem called what the grass knew um she has a poem called like adam speaks finally or something like that and then like a poem of lucifer talking to god she, like it's it's she's she's going back over creation and remaking it and i she taught me to be reflective of history and the poem that re that reminded me of um warning is actually like untitled but people call it um i, I am accused because it's the first word of the poem um but this this is the last one first that i'll say and then i'll go on to my like more contemporary poet who who still who reminded me of something that i kind of forgot um but i am accused of tending to the past as if i made it as if i sculpted it with my own hands i did not this past was waiting for me when i came a monstrous unnamed baby and I with my mother's itch took it to breast and named it history. She is more human now, learning language every day, remembering faces, names and dates. When she is strong enough to travel on her own, beware, she will. Okay, can we like, I love personification. I love personification in poetry. It is one of my favorite things. It is like right up there with alliteration between the two of those things in poetry. Like you got me. I okay. I wrote it down, so it, it's going. Lucille on. Clifton, don't like play that. no games. Like I, like I like that. Just the conversations that her poetry opens up, um, because Langston Hughes, I, he he will he will paint a picture into the time period into the issues uh, of the time for the culture. Um, and Lucille Clifton calls you into like ideas and themes, like talking about his, it really kind of smacks to me of beloved and Sessa talking about her rememory and that like the things that happen to you are always in the place where they happen. And if you go back, they'll be there waiting for you. Like that's what this poem gives me. And I just, I love the way that she inspires me to personify things that I didn't think about personifying. But when you personify something, then you can question it. Like, oh, history, what is history? History is a bit like, the, and it wasn't named at first. Like I like named it this, I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't get into it. But she inspires me to do that, which I, so in, so in other words, to be thoughtful. She inspires me to be thoughtful um, beyond myself. Cause I write about myself a lot or things that have happened to me a lot, but she reminds me to think of the world and to try to imagine how it was before I got there. What was history before it was named history? And what will it be a little bit later? Like I, she, she inspires me to do that. The more contemporary poet is Linnell Moyes. She has a book called, whoop, whoop. Yeah, it's mostly green, so it's not gonna show up. Oh, thank you. Um, I'll put it, oh, oh. <laughs> it's a little oh. tricky. Green screens are tricky. <laughs> oh, here it is. If I'm really still, it's right here. Anyway, Linnell Moyes. I can't stand you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. It's, 
<laughs> it's called Haiti Glass. It's called is the name of the collection. And I talk about this. Um, I talked about this last week in my poetry month Rex. Um, she really, really taught me. Uh, like and and like I said, very similar to to Lucille Clifton, taught me how to think beyond myself. But whereas Lucille Clifton helps me think beyond myself about like ideas, like she writes about history, she writes about autism, um, she writes about creation, the grass that was in the garden, like she writes about that. Um, Lenomoy Ease has, has like encouraged me to write myself into those things. So she has this, my favorite poem of hers is Remember Noah. And she's Haitian American. A lot of her poems are about the experience of being Haitian American and like what her parents were like, we are not American, like we're not like, like that sort of thing. But also like how she as a Haitian American, like how that's a filter that you, when every culture is a filter essentially. So she experienced this thing and it run, her way of understanding runs through her Haitian American filter. And when she's talking about Noah, she, she gives us that same filter and I would never have thought about remembering the great flood through, through a cultural lens. Like if I were there, if I was talking about it from a black American standpoint, what that would look like, as opposed to just like reading the story in the Bible. And she does that. And I'm not, I'm literally just gonna read like three, four standards from it. But like, this is how she talks about Noah and what she's really taking is like the imagery of flood and giving you like a Haitian American deluge. Um, but so it starts, remember Noah, you have to understand it was so hot. Sand as far as the eye could see, sand and teeth, a sealess life, every step, a sinking, a scratch, every storm, more sand, no sweat when we danced, pure salt in our love making. I tried to spit once. It came out like a whistle. My first period, curry powder. Old wives spoke of tears. We thought they were seen now. Laughter was our wettest thing. And so, and so, okay. right, right? So it's just like, it took me, even though she told it like what the poem was, it took me, this poem was like three or four pages. It When she performed it, because she came to my university and performed it, it took me like two or three minutes to even know she was talking about Noah. And so she got to like certain parts that were more familiar, but I appreciate the power of poetry to abstract things and then to show you that you actually kind, that this thing is actually kind of familiar to you, but now you realize that it's not as familiar as you once thought it was. So it helps you to unknow, to re-know, to come from a different perspective in a way that it would take you an entire novel to do. But because of poetry and its ability to abstract, you can do it in a five page poem. You can start to do it immediately in words in ways that like, because of the mechanics of writing the conventions of novel, you have to set things up and you have exposition and you have chapters and you may have acts. Like you have all these different things you have to go through and poetry allows you to circumvent those things. Okay. We took our time on that, but y'all know how we do. We just talking and y'all just here, welcome. Okay. Um, so our own poetry. Okay, I'll before, be right. before you go, before you go, before you go. Okay, so so the poet I was thinking of. Oh, yes. Was the great Rudy Francisco. So I have to acknowledge that there is my a- My whole husband. Me. My whole husband. Like, oh my, like I, I'm trying to get to San Diego one day is all I'm saying. That's all I'm, I'm trying, trying to say. To, like, I'm, I'm trying, like, Oh my gosh. Uh, Rudy. I, he was doing a show one I just, time. I love me. This girl I knew said. You, I knew when I said it. I knew when I said it. You were going to be like. Yes. Now we have to slow down. Because like. <laughs> I'm glad that I chose the ones that I chose. But let me tell you something about this Rudy Francisco character. That's the not man. Me. That man passionate listen my favorite poem of his is this love poem medley and when i tell yes! you, oh my gosh that medley oh my gosh it's the medley for me like it, it 
I think the the title of the first one is to the girl that works at the Starbucks to the girl on the that corner works of Delmont Del Road. Road. I swear to God, I'm not a stalker. I swear to God, I'm not a stalker. <laughs> It only gets better from there, kids. Man, my line is, I want to be your ex-boyfriend's stuntman. I want to do all the things he was too afraid to do, like, I, I, trust what? you. Could you please? Could you please? I would have definitely. Listen, help wanted. That position is open. Like, go ahead. Like, it And will open. always be, don't worry. Like. Rudy, Rudy, Rudy. Oh my goodness. Oh, I love me some Rudy. And that, I was like, I like when you got ready to talk, I was like, oh, she gonna say him and I'm gonna miss it. And then when you were like, I was like, oh, I get the, I get the, I get the, I get the, I get the man. <sighs> so we definitely gonna have to link y'all the, the love poem medley. It's gonna the- be in the comments. Please go and look for it. It's freaking amazing. I'm going to link the one that has the really hype audience, but he did it again at like- The one with the hype audience is my favorite because oh, yeah. somebody was uh, somebody was like, God, <laughs> and he couldn't, he had to stop. He was like, it's always weird when the men the say men. It. Like, it's always weird. Like, I loved it. I loved it. Yo. I was like, yo, if I could have been in that audience because he was feeding off of them and it was yes. so it And was- that's the thing about spoken word poetry. It's like every single rest of because t- he does a lot of the same poems in his in his sets, but it's different every it's time different. because it's the it's a collaborative thing in spoken word. It's the uh, it's the it's the artist energy and the audience's energy, and we're making an experience together. And yeah. that takes a lot of energy too, and a lot of stamina, especially when you're doing poems that are really personal, um, as opposed to just like rah 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 poems, but. Rudy freaking Francisco. I can't remember the name of the venue. I'm gonna kick myself later. Um, right about now. He, he was doing the, someone requested. They were like, do a love poem. And I was like, but listen to them. Um, <laughs> he was at right about now. He, they were asked him to do love poem when he was like, he had like one or two poems up to do in his set. And he started to do it. And this girl said, Rudy, I'm a tree. You can climb me. And he was like, uh, thank you. <laughs> now, as the wife, I was like, see, it's the nerve of you side chicks that gets to me. <laughs> He's trying to bless you. And here you are being loose as a goose trying to get started. But I controlled myself because he proceeded to recite my favorite poem to me. And so that let all the girls know what was going on and what was not going to go on in my absence because I'm here holding down the phone for <laughs> You feel me? But Rudy Francisco, y'all. And it's not just because of love poem, Ellie. He has a lot of really, he has really a lot great. of good poems. Like, um, I, I, I was. I'm not necessarily now as much at all, um, mm-hmm. but I was like a super big Chris Brown fan. And mm-hmm. he had written a poem about like Chris Brown and like that situation when it happened. Yep. 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 And yep. normally in most cases, like I don't really like when people talk about that situation. Cause a lot of times I feel like the way they, which they talk about it is real like reckless. And mm. so when I like listened to his poem, I was like, what's Rudy gonna say? I'm curious about Rudy. And he said it and I was just like, I feel all of this and I couldn't like like my own feelings aside like the poetry was so good in what it was and what he was saying that I could do nothing but respect Mm -hmm. the way in which he brought forth what he said and I loved it like I I did I love it and I feel like that's also like a good uh, a great hallmark of good poetry is even if I don't necessarily agree with the thought process or the content of the poem the way you deliver it and the way you choose to say and paint that picture is still something that I can respect and like give honor to just in yep. that because of like we were saying the personal nature of what it is. Yeah. Yeah. That poem, like he goes in, um, he has a poem to, like, I think to your ex-boyfriend, which is, which is kind of part of the love poem, Melly, but it's a long, it's like part like seven, like it's a long one after like, after the beginning which is when they first meet yeah 
they break up within their medley and he has one to the ex-boyfriend. Yeah, well, he's like, I was a drummer. You, I, He was a drummer. I was a snare. You were a kick drum. Yes. Uh. Cozy Cola. Yo. Yes. That's my whole husband, period. But <laughs> he, he has a lot of good poems. Check out Complainers. Check out Adrenaline Rush. Like, he has to the apocalypse like he has a lot of really really follow boring. him on instagram he drops little poems like regularly like it's a whole thing to Drew, my Drew, city my Drew, honest poem he's just great he is and you you should just follow him you should just follow him and you see how like i knew we were gonna derail because it's rudy of all people it's i have to stop for my husband what i'm not <laughs> it's really do you stop for your significant other? Like, what are you? No, I'm not going to be the one to remind you that you conveniently left your significant other out and I had to remind you. And no, 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 no. The question was favorite poets who have influenced you. Now, is he my favorite poet? Yes, but there are poets who have influenced my actual writing more. We're not talking about his influence on like my physiology. Like, we're not talking about if he, like, steals my heart out of my chest. Like, that was not the question. I was just thinking favorite poets. That's what I was thinking. Favorite but what poets. did I, I say? I said in their influence on you. I answered the question. Now, well, for me, he has definitely been an influence on my increase in spoken word. Because oh, absolutely. Before, uh, before him, I'd only done like a few spoken word after I started like watching him, like I competed in actual spoken word competitions. Mm. So for me, he really was an influence. Okay, I'm glad that my husband could touch you. Yeah. Okay, next question, girl. I'm not about to play with you. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong to say. I'm thanking you on his behalf. But you know, how we write, what we write about, why process, all those things go. Um, so, uh, for the most part, um, I write poetry about feelings. So like whenever I'm feeling like a, an emotion very heavily, angry, happy, sad, disappointed, like it usually prompts me to write a story, uh, write a poem rather. Um, so more times than not, that's usually it, um, there was like, so when I first started my blog, when it was something called completely, something called something completely different than it is now, that's all I did post was poetry. Like mm -hmm. there was nothing but poetry on it. And um, like I was constantly working on it. And then it would get to the point where like some would just be like super duper personal and I wouldn't want to like share it, but I was still like always writing it. Um, so for me, it's usually about like getting emotions out. That's usually like the biggest point of it. Um, like I said, personification is a big, uh, big thing for poetry in poetry for me. So I do a lot of that in my writing. Um, uh, and I know that part of it comes from like being raised in a Christian home. So like in the home I was raised in, like studying the Bible was really, really big. And, mm -hmm. uh, Psalms and Proverbs are like two of my favorite books of the Bible. Um, obviously, because they're very poetic in the way that they are written. And we know David was a psalmist, like that, mm -hmm. that was a thing that he did. So mm -hmm. um, when it comes to when it came to that, and like the scriptures I would memorize, I became infatuated with the idea of like, wisdom being a person, because that's how he always writes it. She's a mm -hmm. she, and mm -hmm. she's a her. And there are things that you must do to win her favor and to be wise in her eyes and things like that. And so um, that that is like a common thread through my poetry is those things that we think that don't have any life or just like ideas to us like I like to explore that um, specifically because like I explored in my own thoughts so how much more so in the words that I bring forth um, the the biggest thing about my like creating poetry is when I was younger, rhyme used to be like the number one thing that I focused on. Uh -huh. And as I got older and started to learn and actually study poetry, like it, rhyming is only like this like small portion right. of what poetry is. Mm -hmm. And I began to like play with that more. And I think the the understanding that I don't have to rhyme, the understanding that, you know, cadence 
is a thing in writing and in speaking yes. when you're doing poetry. Yes. Um, understanding like type typography. Like that's the thing that you don't pay attention to as much in novels, but in poetry, like the letters dropping off of a word in a poem, like that all means something like the way in which you display it. And that got me playing around with that, like with words and how I maneuver things around. And then I think the final thing that I focus on when I'm writing a poem is language, mm -hmm. like in, in my writing in general, but especially in poetry, like I'm always the type of person that I like for it to be how I would really talk in this situation, how I would really engage and interact. And in writing, like storytelling, you know, like I'll, I'll back off of that a little bit. I won't mm -hmm. say something exactly like how I would say it, like I'd proper it up and things like that. And for me, when it comes to my poetry, I feel like it's more authentic because it's more so like, nah, this is me. Mm -hmm. And this is how I'm talking. And this is how I need to express this idea to you. And I don't need to mold it, shape it in such a way that's easier for your consumption because it's not meant to be that way. And you have to take it this raw, uncut way that I'm giving it to you or else you're not going to get it. Right. And that that is like the bigger focus when I'm doing my poetry is that mm -hmm. that mindset so I think I answered it. But you did. <laughs> I don't know why you were acting like you can't answer a question. You were answering all my questions. I mean, I'll be like, because I would start talking and in my head, I'm like, did I get off track? I feel like I'm rambling. Did I answer it? So I got to like get back to. You know, I'll be building my own track and be unapologetic <laughs> about it. So, but yes, you did. Um, my poetry, I started writing poetry in high school after one poetry assignment in high school in Texas, all it took. It was, the first poem I ever wrote was called What If? And it was, I, it was like, what if pigs could fly? What if I could touch the sky? What if something, something? And then it ended on some like high school deep place. You know how we get real deep in high school because we see mm -hmm. the world in ways that everyone else doesn't. Um, so that was that. And then afterwards, I was, I, I kept writing um, about my relationship with my sister, how I felt about like my parents sometimes or like how they would respond um, to certain things or like the people came in and out of my life, like writing about that. Um, I don't, I, I do think I had a journal, but I don't really remember what was in the journal. I remember old poems that I wrote though. Um, so in, 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 this, in a similar way to you, like poetry was journalistic um, in a memorable way. I had had, ha I've had at least two journals from like middle school. I, mean, I don't remember anything but the cover of the diary. There was a very cute puppy on it. I begged my mother to buy it for me and she acquiesced. That's all I remember. And it had a little lock on it. And now you could pick that lock with a fork. But I felt secure that it had its own little twist. You, you always feel secure as a kid when there's a lock on something. Like right. those locks can be broken. Like you could flick it with your finger a little too hard. <laughs> you didn't care. You didn't care was a lock. And you better stay out. Like right. you better not okay. read it. Right. right. The journal was the was was a diary was another diary for me though. Um in high school, I got more into spoken word. That's when I came across Rudy Francisco. It's also when I came across um, this group called Strivers Row. Um, Zora, what is her last name? Howard. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. She has this poem called Before Bed, period. Starts off Bobby Pin Crown. And I was like, and you have me. You've got me for life. Be careful with me. Um, amazing poet. Miles Davis, like Carvin's Lassant, his poem, tell them if you don't know that poem, you're doing yourself a disservice. Um, but like, I, I started listening to those poets and I don't know that I started writing, like consciously writing self, um, spoken word until like some real racist stuff happened on my college campus. And things can be paralyzing. Like writer's blog isn't the only thing that can stop a pen. Tragedy can stop a pen sometimes. Um, right. And spoken word helped me to express when I couldn't write because I found that 
I found a lot of versatility and cadence. I could walk around my dorm and just spit a spoken word poem out of nowhere. And I didn't need anything to rhyme. I could take anything, like anything could become a spoken word poem for me. And that's a lot of the ways um, that I was able to sort of activate against racism on campus by working mm -hmm. with the theater, by making um, a spoken experiment where I was talking about representations of race and ethnicity on campus like broke fire codes because people want to come and hear that but they're tired of all the round tables and so was i um so spoken word really became a vehicle for me to open conversations about things that i had never really had to deal with in those contexts separated from my parents or anything like that um and i continue to write spoken word um and it, it just, it helps me to make sense of things. It helps me to write about myself, but I also sometimes write about like anxieties, like my poem, Ode to Blackness, that I put on my channel last um, month, which initially, like I was asked to write that for um, my college's Black Student Association, where they were having their first commencement. Their treasurer knew I wrote poetry because she worked with me in the theater and she asked me to, to write a poem. So it was my first commissioned piece. Um, but in going about writing it, like, oh, what do I write about like the first commencement? I was thinking about all the expectations that would be placed upon a Black event, a Black poet, that sort of thing. And so poetry, in addition to helping me express myself, helps me to chase down ideas that I'm truly not sure about the beginning of the poem. But by the end, though the end may be 10 minutes away, by the end, I have arrived at a place where I understand a bit more than I did before. And so poetry also um, has come to help me make sense of things in ways that like writing essays don't do like that. Cause I was I wrote essays in, college, in high school, I wrote a lot of essays in high school. Then in college, helping me, un making meaning became poetry, um, particularly spoken word poetry. And, um, the significance of poetry to Black expressive culture, which we've low key been talking about this entire time. Honestly, I mean, I don't really know what to say. Like, right, Black people in general, like everything that we do for the most part has some form of poetry in it. There is a rhythm to everything we do, from the way that we speak to the way that we walk to everything. Like, I think. And to some extent, being black is a poem. Like for me, like if, if you're being, if I'm being real about it, like mm -hmm. I don't really, like when I think about music, it's poetry. When I did like think about everything that is us, it's poetry. And mm. so like for me, it's super significant because it is us. And mm. that's not to say like other people don't write poetry and everything, but I feel like Poetry is a very unique thing to everything that we do from all forms of types of our music, like mm -hmm. rap. Obviously. Our, one of the biggest, biggest things, of course, is one of the most obvious examples of poetry because legitimately spoken word with music. Right. For the most part, right. Like, so. Especially in its earlier days. Now. Right. Right now, like, man, can we, oh, God. We won't even get into it, but uh, it, at its uh, origins, for sure. Origins, even, like, right. the group, like, the last poets. Man, like, everything that was going on, like, it's, man, it is so different. Like, I, Tupac Shakur was a poet. Legitimately. A dang good poet. Like, ridiculously amazing. And mm -hmm. I think that that is also why, like, for me, I... I am so like dissatisfied with what rap is now because mm -hmm. there is such a lack of the poetry right. in it. Right. Like now it is more so just words. Mm -hmm. There's not like that, like I think yeah. that that's honestly like a highlight of what rap was, especially in its genesis, is because it was poetic storytelling. Like right. run and see, that's that's what they were doing. Those were the right. pictures they were painting. And so right. for me, as far as its significance, I think it I think it is very significant. I think, um, especially like thinking back to Phyllis Wheatley being one of the, our, our, our first poet, but one of the first published black people, period. Like regardless right, of right. poetry or storytelling, like right. it was our way of getting in those books, mm -hmm. right? Like the Walter Mosley, Walter the Mosley friend, like it yes. was our way of instituting ourselves at like rooting ourselves in the culture. And so I feel like 
I feel like it's super significant. And I feel like the lack of time, understanding, and education we put into poetry as Black people is more to our detriment than anything. Like, I feel like it should be, I, I feel like it's so significant to me that it should be required for us mm-hmm. like it should be a required learning right like it's like yeah. like there's certain things that black people you should just be required to know especially mm-hmm. black people in america and i feel like poetry is one of those things yeah yeah i agree um and, and they do use it in and and different things like different kinds of therapy they do because they recognize that it helps you to express things that you can't say yet um, again, like poetry, and it was uh, Joshua Bennett is actually the one that I heard say this, and I don't remember what poem um, he, he it was. He was proceeding by saying this, or maybe it was in a poem. Um, probably was, um, and he said, po- "Like poetry speaks the ineffable," and it absolutely does. That and and ju- the paradox of that sentence right there is poetry. Poetry right. speaks the ineffable. If it's ineffable, it can't be said. Right. So that would be a poet on Instagram. Like that right there. They would post that and it would be it. And that would be, it would be done. You're blessed for the day. Go forth. Right. Like, so <laughs> I, I, I totally agree 100%. Like, and we've been talking about the entire time. So in a way there's no need for us to like explicitly address this because all that we have been saying is that Poetry is is a lot of the ways that Black people have kept history when we weren't writing history books, have told stories when we when we weren't published in that and and the novelistic genres. Um, Toni Morrison is a great example, particularly I'm thinking of Song of Solomon. Um, it was a children's rhyme that that was the key to the entire mystery of that book, the Song of Solomon. Um, I if you haven't gotten it yet, we cannot overstate the importance of poetry to Black expressive culture, especially because of the um, of the orality of it, right? Like novels are written things, specifically they're written. You don't speak novels, you write them. Right. Poetry is a is a dynamic form. You can you can tell the story, epics or long poems, right? right. A lot of our like oral th- traditions of storytelling are rooted in poetry in a way that the way that we write now in novels and short stories are not necessarily. Um, poetry is early, 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 and it's it's persistent to now because it's so fundamental to how we express things. Um, and in some register, consciously or subconsciously, every culture understands and respects that. Um, so, Enjoy this National Poetry Month. If you are someone who's never written a poem, challenge yourself to write one poem. You don't have to share it, but if you do share it, tag me um, on, yeah, at yeah. Writerly and Cache 50 uh, SO, is it SO, right? Yeah. 50, 50 SO, 50 SO Shay. Um, and I'll, you know, that, that, that. You'll see. <laughs> You'll see. You'll all see. Um, <laughs> Uh, and we are both on Twitter and Instagram. So wherever you share that, if you decide to share it, definitely tag us. Um, and we'll retweet and we'll send it far and wide. Or if you don't want us to tell us when we want, we'll just like it. Yeah, but, like if you just want us to like know that you did it, like that's cool too. Like we'll right. Just we'll just see it and like it and love it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, if you've never written a poem, really um, challenge yourself to think about what you can't, what you felt like you can't express other places and see if the, the poem can help. Um, if you've made it this far and the video... Mm, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? I mean, I think the poem is a good thing. Like, hey, like, okay. So, you know what I think would be cool? Is however the comments go, like we start like a chain and it's a line and then everybody who watches add is, adds a line and we just have like a poem from like the viewer. I think that would be kind of cool. Okay. And then like so, when we do next, next month's video, we could be we'll like, hey, we could read it. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do a chain form. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Okay. That's what's going to happen. Um, Shay and I are going to, do you want to like start it together or each do our own separate line? 
Well, no, let's start to let's let's do our own separate lines. So like whenever you put the video up, you'll put the first line and let me know and then I'll do the second and then everybody okay. can put after. So yeah, I will pin I will pin that to the thing and then all of them all the rest will be in order. Oh, I'm so excited. This okay. Is be so fun. I like yeah. why are we so more excited at the very end because of this idea? Like it just like because we're probably I'm coming and I love collaborative art making I because do. it's so special. Okay, listen, those of you who are like, oh, I've never know I messed it up. You're not gonna mess it up. At all. The poem is so like, it's 30, it's 30. It is 30. Add your line, the poem will be fine. See, I'm already starting to rhyme. Hey. Hey. hey add your line, like, the poem will be fine. I see I'm you. already starting to rhyme. I see you. Okay, look at you. It's your bad self. Get out of here, Rudy. Anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not about to play with you. Why well, not? It's so fun. Okay, if you've made it this far in the video, please add a line to our comment poem, and we'll read it. Um, was it May? We'll read it May over on Shay's channel. It'll be so much fun. Don't be afraid. This is a safe space. Y'all know I will block somebody oh, in a know. heartbeat know. and gain five years see. on my life. You're safe here in the land of literates. Don't you worry. Okay. But I'm excited for this. Like I I'm so excited. Okay. We will see y'all next week over on Shay's channel with our with our comment poem. We're ready to go. Until then, we will see y'all next time. Bye-bye.